Hi, this is AJ, and today we are going to talk about Central Vigilance Commission. Okay, this is our polity lecture series. Okay, so let's start. So, see, first point is it is established in 1964 uh, by an executive resolution. Okay, so but after uh, in 2003, the Parliament gave it the constitution, uh, a statutory status. Okay, so remember that right now the Central Vigilance Commission is a statutory body. Okay, not a constitutional but a statutory body. There is an act passed by. Okay, so that act gives it its power. Okay, then uh, 2004 Parliament gave it a designated agency status. That means what? That it can receive a complaint against a person who is working in a central government. Okay, composition will be have the same uh, same old same old fashion. That is, one chairperson will be there. He is supported by the two commissioners. Okay, that chairperson is appointed by the president. That appointment committee is headed by the prime minister and as a leader of opposition in Lok Sabha, not Rajya Sabha, but Lok Sabha and the Home Minister of the uh, Union Home Minister. Okay, then again, uh, his retirement is 65 or uh, six years, whichever is earlier. And uh, again, what is the point? That he cannot be reappointed. Okay. Okay. Next point is the uh, role of SC in removal. What happens is that if that person who is uh, appointed as a commissioner, okay, chairperson of the Central Vigilance Commission. If a uh, president wants to remove him because uh, of uh, his incapacity to work, then he can directly remove it. Okay, but if he president wants to remove him on the ground of misbehavior, okay, then that misbehavior should be proven. Okay, so how how to prove that misbehavior? Then you have to uh, give that uh, case to the Supreme Court. Then Supreme Court will uh, inquire into that matter, and it will uh, tell give its report to the president that yes uh, or not whether that person has committed any misbehavior or not and then only the president can remove him okay but other matters in other things he can directly remove the central vigilance uh, chairperson okay then uh, again this organization have three wings one will be secretariat then there will be chief technical examiner's wing then there will be commissioner for departmental inquiries the names uh, tells uh, what uh, what should be the functions of these uh, three wings okay secretary means all the general administration will they will deal about with that and then uh, there will be chief technical examiner's wing that means that uh, examiner's wing will uh, inquire into the you know technical aspects like if there is a um, you know corruption in the bridge building okay so at that time there will be we need a technical expert you know to identify the corruption so that that uh, technical wings uh, do this kind of job and commissioner for departmental inquiries name suggest it all there will be a departmental inquiries uh, to look into the departmental inquiries there will be a commissioner these three wings are, um, are under central vigilance commission next point is uh, see uh, delhi special police established I meant uh, so far as it relates okay again this point is very simple okay remember that there is a cbi okay uh, which is a not statutory not constitutional body and there is a central vigilance commission which is now a statutory body so what happens is that if uh, there is a particular case okay uh, which talks about the corruption in particular department and that case is given to the cbi okay to solve okay but uh, because it uh, has a topic uh, the core topic of that uh, case is corruption okay so on that case uh, the higher authority will be the central vigilance commission not the cbi okay so if uh, like i will give one uh, one more example if there is a case in which there is a uh, some uh, murder of somebody okay and that uh, murder is uh, investigated by the cbi okay so now there is no uh, point of corruption in that particular murder so there will be so bi will be the supreme body in that particular case but if that particular case given to the cbi uh, deals with the corruption in the central government then central vigilance commission will be the apex body in that particular case okay remember that then uh, uh, we have to you know consult with cvc if uh, the uh, government wants to make rules and regulations governing the vigilance and disciplinary matters in the particular every department okay if the government central government wants to make such rules okay or new rules or modify the existing rules okay in that matters it has to 
consult with CVC. Okay, remember that. Then next is again see appointing functions. Uh, Central Vigilance Commission uh, appoints two major uh, uh, directors. Okay, first is the director of the uh, enforcement. Uh, enforcement directorate is appointed by the Central Vigilance Committee. Okay, and next is uh, in the appointment of the CBI director. Okay, again the CBI director is appointed by the president, but uh, it is uh, support in consultation with the Central Vigilance Committee. Okay, there will be a committee in the Central Vigilance Department which will talk about the you know whether uh, which person to appoint uh, as a CBI directorate. Okay, then only that person will be appointed as a CBI director. Remember that these are the special powers of the Central Vigilance Commissions. Then jurisdiction what comes under Central Vigilance Commission. Okay, remember that in any major officer okay uh, that uh, might uh, deal with uh, that might be involved in the corruption comes under the jurisdiction of the central vigilance commission again there is no minister no minister comes under the central vigilance commission state government's officers uh, doesn't come under the central vigilance commission okay only central government officers as well as uh, officers in a uh, public sector banks as well as uh, uh, officers in a uh, public sector undertakings okay so these officers at a higher level only uh, that comes under the central vigilance commission as well as the officer uh, who gets a payment of 8700 rupees per month okay uh, that comes under the jurisdiction of the supreme uh, uh, sorry central vigilance commission okay remember that again this uh, slide explains like Officers of grade B, grade D, and above, or in RBI, NABAR, CDB, B, they comes under the jurisdiction of the Central Vigilance Commissions. Then, higher officers in public sector undertakings, then managers and above in general insurance and LIC, okay, Life Insurance Corporation. Then all India services, okay, these uh, which are three all India services: Indian Forest Service, Indian Police Service, and Indian Administrative Service. Okay, then uh, Group A services of central government again these uh, foreign services also come under this central vigilance uh, you know uh, or a commission okay next point is working okay see again it some has some quasi judicial status okay it can give some punishments also then uh, it uh, regulates its own procedure again uh, reasons in how uh, uh, this is a very important point reasons in writing what that means is that if central uh, vigilance commission advises a particular ministry about some topic okay and if that particular ministry does not want to uh, take consider those advice given by the central vigilance commission then in, at that time it gave it has to give uh, reasons to central vigilance commission in writing okay so remember that this brings you know some accountability uh, in the departments okay they can't just uh, turn down the advice given by the central vigilance commission they have to given they have to give these reasons for turning down the advice of the central vigilance commission this is the you know it's a very good power in the hands of the central vigilance commission then uh, the central vigilance commission again as i told you earlier that anything any person appointed by the president gives a annual report to the president okay and that report is uh, submitted uh, or presented in the parliament by the president okay remember that again same thing happens uh, in the central vigilance commission also it will give its annual report to the president and the president will present that report in the parliament okay next point is chief vigilance officer what does that means see chief vigilance officer will be appointed in every department or every ministry okay uh, that he will uh, act as a mediator between that ministry and central vigilance commissions okay so he will deal with the you know particular uh, cases uh, concerning that particular ministry okay and if he is unable to solve these cases then he will uh, you know transfer that cases to the central vigilance commission so it just uh, a method to you know reduce the workload of the central vigilance commission so there is a necessary to appoint a chief vigilance officer in every department or ministry in the central government okay so these are the functions and powers and uh, important things about central vigilance commission uh, remember these things okay there will not be a direct question on central vigilance commission i guarantee you that but just for our sake of uh, knowledge we need to know these things and remember this uh, crucial part is uh, in the case of cbi okay so what is the relationship between the cbi and central vigilance commission just understand that relationship okay there will be most probability that they will ask uh, questions on these things only okay 
again uh, one more thing i would like to talk to you about okay so these videos i make is for you know uh, is uh, not for the understanding part okay i don't uh, generally explain the uh, actual uh, you know various things in that particular slide that we discuss i just uh, tell you about uh, you know it's some um, if you see my lectures uh, they are in a uh, you know they are of a factual type okay so why these are an infactual type because see at the time of uh, you know prelims examination we need to revise all the things okay so these videos will help you in the revision okay for better understanding you need to work on yourself okay you, and i i'm sure that every person who uh, joins the preparation of upsc uh, firstly it, uh, completes the syllabus of polity okay he tries to complete the syllabus of polity and if you have completed a syllabus of uh, polity in at uh, at least for uh, uh, you know first revision is done by you then these videos will help you uh, for better revising these all the topics that you have covered already okay it is uh, i don't generally explain all the things i expect that uh, you must have read about those th these things uh, previously okay so just remember that these videos are of type revision type videos are there okay so it will help you uh, in revising all the things okay so if you give one day okay if we complete this series and uh, at the after completion of series it will be easy for you Uh, to revise all the matters in one day only okay so these for this purpose i make these videos i don't uh, make this uh, videos uh, you know for uh, understanding purpose okay i i can't explain you everything i just expect that you know already okay so these two videos are for revision only remember that okay so thanks guys for watching this uh, this video and we will meet in a next video peace